Welcome back to my channel. Today it was one of the most challenging days in 2019 because I decided to do my own personal income taxes alone at home and it's such a crazy day and I've been working since 9 o'clock. I met my accountant in her office. She told me that it would cost me a lot of money if she does it for me. So instead she could teach me and I would do it myself. And I said, okay, teach me. And I'm very curious to learn. And then she taught me, she gave me like a guideline and sent me home and ever since, I arrived home, I've been doing this with like three cups of coffee. Now it's 10 p.m. I haven't had dinner yet and it's totally insane. It is one of the most stressful, freaking out day of 2019. I want to tell a little bit more about what I have found, what are my feelings <laughs> and what are the realities and continue yesterday's video. Perhaps it will help you if you decide to work as a creative entrepreneur in Europe or working with someone in Europe. This is very helpful for you to get an idea like why European economy is the way it is because their taxes system so basically, as a creative entrepreneur, you have two kinds of income, the active income and passive income. And yesterday I have told you a little bit about them and today I'll just use some numbers as real examples. For example, if you're an artist and the first thing when you sell your first painting that you need to worry about is your active income as a creative entrepreneur, as a painter, as a freelancer and you need to pay this freelancing license, which is 300 euro for me. And then usually you have to pay uh, also accountant because it's very challenging to do the accounting yourself. Every month, every trimester, you need to uh, like uh, declare uh, like a mini formula. So it's very stressful. I pay my accountant 70 euros. So it's 370 as a fixed cost. And then on top of that, there are some other costs. If you have internet access for your research, if you rent a studio, if you, for example, reserve a part of your house as a, like a rented house as a, a studio, then you will be deducting half of your rental costs. If you buy uh, materials, computers, and you have to gather all the receipts with your name and VAT number on it, and after that you can deduct. Most of the costs you can deduct immediately, but some costs that you cannot deduct immediately, for example, computers, it's such a large cost and unlikely you throw away next year, you'd still use it for at least two, three years. So usually it's deducted over two years time when it is something that is a little bit costly, like more than 1000 euro, then yes, it's deducted in two years. And consult your accountant and uh, depending where you are, she or he will be able to tell you in more details, but this is just a rough idea. Imagine you sold an artwork, that worth 1,000 euro, and you live in Spain, you sold to someone in Paris. If it's a business with a VAT registration, you don't need to charge VAT inter-community in European Union. But if this person is a private collector, you need to charge VAT, and then this VAT goes to your government, and you don't keep this VAT. So this you need to uh, charge the client on top, this 1,000 euro uh, worth of work, you need to charge 21%. And on top, that's 1,210. This 210 goes to the government, you don't get to keep it. So your profit is 1,000, this gross profit, and then you have to deduct all the business costs. And for example, you spend 500 uh, in painting materials, internet, your uh, license, your content, and finally your uh, net profit is 500 euro. And then this goes to the formula and in the end of the year, you will calculate from passive to active together and you will pay from 19% to 45%. Of course, they will give you a small undeductible, unspeakable costs. Like this part is just a mini part of the tax free so that they understand. Sometimes you um, perhaps go to socialize with your client and you go to have a coffee with them those costs are not really deductible. Like you, you pay everything on the go, you didn't keep the receipts and those things are understandable and they will give you a very small, tiny deduction. But pretty much you have to pay a lot of the things, 19% as a minimum personal income taxes. And then there is the passive income part, which gets even better. Like, trust me, like uh, today I learned more in details and I was like, this doesn't make any sense. 
So passive income can be anything from real estate to intellectual property rights, and like royalties from selling a book. Uh, in my case, it's real estate. I run Airbnb and rentals, and those rentals I need to have like a list of which date the client comes, how many nights he or she stayed, and what is the revenue for me. And I have to make a long list. After that, I can see how many nights of the year. Like for example, 80% of this year is rented out to guests. And then this is the part that is actually proportionally deductible of all my costs. And the costs part, there are two parts. There is the running costs like utility bills, like water, electricity, internet, insurance, and some emergency reparation that comes a worker, he bills me, these kind of things. And then there is the investment, kind of real estate investment costs. For example, I changed a new window, a new door, a new lamp. And these costs cannot be deducted immediately because you don't change a window every year. Same to the computer, if you work as an active freelance, you get deducted 10% every year for 10 years. This is rather normal considering furniture, windows, such stuff. But to my surprise, my accountant also told me to, to leave other costs like towels, bed linens as a part of real estate investment costs because it's very similar to windows and I mean it, bed linens you don't throw after every use unless you contract a company as a cleaning company and they come and they do everything for you then okay it's a running cost uh, you can deduct immediately otherwise you have to deduct 10% every year I mean excuse me do you think this towel can last 10 years do you think a bed linen can last 10 years? On Sunday, a guest got beaten up by his girlfriend. He broke his nose, blood everywhere, shooting to the ceiling, to the walls, on the bed. It's like a pool of blood everywhere. Bed linen? Excuse me, 10 years. No, I'm not, I, I, I mean, it lasted three days for me, actually, literally. But anyway, this is the reality of accounting. In schools, uh, people teach accounting in a, a much more reasonable way. Like when I was studying my MBA, my accounting teacher told me, oh, you have the double acceleration, you have this you know, um, normal amortization. But when it comes to reality, reality is like a war. Boom, it hits me and it's really throw me off course. And I didn't understand nothing anymore. I started questioning life and I was like, I don't think I want to live another 50 years doing my own accounting every single year. It's a pure, painful experience in life. I really admire anyone who is doing their own accounting. This is such a courage. You are an everyday hero. Trust me, this is such a um, challenging experience, especially if you are a creative entrepreneur. Accounting is not something that you normally do or normally learn at schools. And it's something that you have to pick up and you have to learn, you have to do it. And it's not intuitive, it's counterintuitive. Like the bed linen for 10 years, like this is not even common sense. I don't know about your local law, leave me a comment and tell me about it. Um, at least from what I see, like sometimes uh, Spanish laws, um, they don't make much sense to me. Okay, apart from that, there are other costs like um, insurance, like amortization of the building, so on and so forth, and I could deduct everything and then they will calculate this passive income part, net profit, uh, plus the net profit from my active income as a creative entrepreneur, they would calculate and then I pay 19 to 45% depending on how much I earn. This is still okay. Like, okay, if it's this level of complication, I admit I can still take it. But then I told my accountant, what if I sell ebooks one day? And she's like, okay, if you sell your ebooks from, for example, Amazon, and Amazon gives you a paycheck every year, then you handle it like, uh, like a financial market revenue, like if you have received rentals from your guests, this is totally normal. And you just uh, have this bill as a justification and it's like you put in which day to receive how much from which payer and finished. But if you sell each download as an independent download to each independent client on your own website, you need to issue, you need to write down each. For example, this date I sold to this person $3 or even like $1, depending on, you know, if you actually sell it on a promotion, like click 
download and you sell it for like three dollars one dollar $9.99 like I don't know like just to give you example you need to write down everything including the VAT of this country and then you need to write down this calculate everything and give it to her and if you sold millions of copies of your ebook congratulations you spend the next 365 days doing your accounting every day probably eight hours every day this is totally insane and this is the current law in spain doing e-commerce especially this kind of e-commerce which is rather passive but not really passive it just doesn't make any sense really like just because she told me that i was like you know what I'm not gonna sell ebook downloads. I probably will publish a book on Amazon or something, find a publisher, just to get my life easier. I don't want, you know, to having to bill one million clients with their each VAT of each country and their names and their VAT numbers, if their businesses. It's like, please, I want to live a life. I want to have time to create and to do interesting things. And it's just such a challenging thing in life and I had not expected this coming to me and uh, surprises every day a lot of things to learn and I hope I will just be able to give you a whole picture of um, doing accounting on your own as a creative entrepreneur in Europe if you have any questions leave me a comment below I am going to finish this thing I think I will spend the next two hours crying in the bed uh, doing my accounting and I will not have time to have dinner I'll just have some um, relatively healthy chips and um, here I'm off thank you very much for watching see you in the next video